Hey guys, so Rob brought over some 915 J heads and uh, we flowed them completely stock. He brought over some brand new Melling uh, exact replacement valves. Melling was actually the name of my German grandmother, by the way. <sighs> I wish they, she owned the company. That would have been cool. Uh, so what I do... I gave this a first cut. You can see where the dicum just bangs into that bottom wall there. Really bad. Okay. This little spot in the floor. Let's move over to the stalker and see if we can see what we can see. Much harder to see on the stalker. But there is a a bulge here that raises the roof on this whole section it actually goes up and it goes back down and then it goes to the bowl. Now, first time I looked at that, I said, I wonder if that's a, a ramp to blow the fuel towards the valve. So I didn't take it all the way out. I wanted to get some uh, airspeed measurements first. And the original airflow measurements on the top of that bowl were... 203 on the center of the cylinder, which is on our left, and 213.7 on our right. So they were relatively even. Well, after I worked my magic, they are not even close. Center of the cylinder is 183, because I had to take out more material on that side around that guide and everything to make some room. And uh, the straight wall went up to 231. Not not ideal. You want them as even as you can, so you use the area more, more efficiently. Um, I don't think I use Dicom on the bone stockers. Okay, you can see I did a quick beaver teeth went over. I wasn't going to go crazy with it because the guides need to be done. Um, and they're actually bad enough that I don't think I could even do them with my bronze wall guide kit. I think they're too loose to get a straight shot with uh, my arbor. So these may have to go out and get guides. You can really see how that fuel is uh, fueled. The dicum is really just hitting that one spot. And the rest of that bowl has basically nothing. Okay. Can't focus where the dam. Okay, that looks a little better. Not a lot on the cylinder. Okay, the marks on the right are old ones, but that uh, that angled bit of dicum, that's from just now. Okay, the short side radius got some work, but nothing major. Just a little reshape, a touch wider, and... Uh, went over it with a cartridge roll. Nothing big. You can see the right hand side of that uh, short side radius really comes up at an angle. They actually fill quite a lot of the, uh, the bowl that way. Which I think is interesting because the other side is very tall, right? The low short side radius, very tall roof. The other side, they shrank the floor and they shrank the roof. Makes you wonder what they were doing, right? All right, the exhaust was relatively easy to uh, to clean up. You can see where I brought it out a little bit on the left, raised the roof a little bit. Much thicker than the uh, 318 castings. You can see the bump where the water jacket is on the roof of that port, which is the bottom. That's still quite thick. I could take a lot more out of that, but I wanted to see what kind of flows we're going to get. Uh, just the way it is. I took a slight notch out of the chamber and forgot to blend it in with a stone or a small burr. I did a quickie beaver tooth and then radius for a seat. That's it. Okay, because this is a 340-360 design, it's got a different, different shape for the end exhaust ports. It's not completely rectangular. It's quite tall, 
that's much wider. It's as it's as wide as the 318 center ones are. And the center ones here are even wider. You can see you can get some decent uh, curves and so forth out of the uh, out of the exhaust at this point. And uh, you know, well, not a lot of metal has been taken out of that, to be honest. Not a lot at all. Just kind of fix the shapes a little bit, more of a tune-up. Okay, the floor is even worse than 318 heads. They made it even bigger and more misshapen. I took some of the rust and lumps and bumps off, and that was that's it. Nothing you can really do with it unless you're going to fill it with iron, which at that point you're better off getting a better head. So clean it, forget it. I think it's interesting that Chrysler took the crummy center design and even put it on the end cylinders. I'm not really sure why they did that because it's still got it on on the center ones but they've also transferred it to the end ones so you do what you can you know you put a radius on it you bring the throat out a little bit so you can get a little bit of a short side radius put a cartridge roll on it send it the chamber's got a really good shape it really doesn't need much you got to touch a little bit by the plug, but be careful because it's it's relatively thin there, and these are probably going to get opened up to a bigger valve because the guides are so bad that would make life a little bit easier. I'm tempted to uh, suggest putting uh, magnum valves in it. If you're going to get if you got to get the guides done anyway. Why not put 11 30 seconds in, right? That might be uh, that might be a cool experiment. Okay, that's what the stock J heads did. They did about 215 CFM at 500, 141.7 at 500, 154.7 with a pipe. Not bad. Uh, pretty close to what a Fuley does. Fuley Fuley Chevy is about 208, 150. Right, so. For a bone stock design, it's really not bad. Now, what can we say about the swirl? It's completely dead in the lower lifts, and then you can see when it starts skipping over the short side radius, it goes way up, right? Okay. Now, first cut, how'd we do? Well, we got plus, 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 minus, minus, plus, 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 plus. So we went from 215.5 to 243.1 and 245 at 5.5. So that's hanging right with the worked up 302 castings. Now you have to remember the 302 castings had a lot more development work. This was first cut. I'm sure I can get more than that out of these. I don't know what guys are getting out of these with 188 intake valves. But that's what this has got. Um, I mean, just, just throwing a back cut on that melling will make a big difference, I'm sure. That's a few CFM right there. Take a look at the exhaust. The exhaust improves quite a bit. Plus, plus, plus all the way down. All right, 163.6 at 500, which is not bad. And 168 with a pipe. Really not bad. Now let's take a look at our stock air speeds and I put the pluses and minuses over here okay now I did make the pinch a little bigger so that's why our pinch numbers went down the pinch is actually quite good on this unlike 302s 302s is way tiny this has got a good size pinch I don't think it was holding us back much at all now take a look at right, center of cylinder went way down because I added a lot of area in that that side and 213.7, 231. It's sped up a lot on that side. So these are more uneven than they were stock. So that's a mistake on my part. I'll have to work on that. Bring it up center of the cylinder side. Now take a look at our short side radius. Because 
the shape I put on the short side radius is more efficient, you get a lot more air across the short side radius now. All right, plus, plus, plus. So what does that do to our swirl? Well, you compare this swirl curve to this swirl curve, right? You got plus, 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 minus, plus, minus, minus, minus. You got more down low, less up high, which is not, I would much rather have this curve. I'd rather have it dead in the low lifts and then hit it hard when you get more, uh, more valve lift into it. As far as the exhaust speeds, that's what they look like stock. Now, I didn't make the exit any bigger because I usually don't like to. But I had to change the roof quite a bit. And that outside wall and inside wall, a decent amount. So what do we got? We got minus, 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 right? And the center we got, we got more roof action, but the rest of it slowed down. Not really great. And that wall was not great to begin with. We picked up at the top. We picked up in the middle. Bottom died. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to do anything with the floor due to that horrendous port shape, I think. That's just the feeling I get. I mean, now I can take a look at what I did on the... Uh, the 318 castings, the 302 castings, but uh, overall that exhaust is not bad. Uh, the exhaust valve, it's got a decent shape. You know, for a stock replacement, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. You know what it doesn't have? It doesn't have as much of a tulip as most, as most, uh, Chrysler valves have, I don't think. This does. That looks very similar to the 318 valves that I've got. With the heavy tool. It's a heavy valve. Alright, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I was interested in... Uh, I'm still interested in what other guys are getting out of these uh, these J heads. Alright, they got the J. There's the 915. They say on 360 somewhere. 360. I think uh, I think a 202 valve would pick it up quite a bit. Or even if we go to the Magnum 190, 192s, I think they are. 1.625s. That'd be nice. You get some fresh metal under the valves. It'd be great. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.